Well, hello everybody. Sheriff Matt Oller at Audrain County here in Missouri, and uh, we're actually up in Monroe County at the weekend place, but uh, kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. Uh, today is four weeks, uh, so 28 days since uh, I had spinal fusion surgery. And I know that uh, I think I've made uh, one video about some of that stuff uh, early on, maybe day three or four or something like that. And I, I may have uh, touched on it a little bit uh, in a video that I made about uh, drawn from a shoulder holster. Um, but today marks four weeks since, uh, since I had this surgery. And I kind of wanted to touch up a little bit on anybody that's going to have this. Kind of wanted to touch up a little bit on at least my experience with uh, recovery because it has been, I don't want to say interesting because it's not interesting. It sucks. Uh, it sucked pretty, pretty bad. Uh, the suck factor has been really high. Uh, a lot of ups and downs. Uh, a lot of uh, just a huge roller coaster ride physically, mentally, psychologically. Um, ironically, a, a good friend of mine, uh, another dog guy, a uh, police dog guy, uh, he had the very same surgery that I had six days after I had it. And we've been talking. Uh, actually, I drove down and, and saw him yesterday, but we've been talking on the phone about every other day. Um, just you know, back and forth with, with our experiences with this. Um, I've never had major surgery when I was 49. So two years ago, I had my tonsils taken out. Uh, that sucked really bad. Uh, but short of that, that's the only surgery I've ever had. Knock on wood, I've been uh, pretty healthy my whole adult life. So I don't have anything to compare this to. Uh, but uh, my friend Tracy... Uh, he's had knee replacements. He's had hips worked on, shoulders worked on. Uh, so, I mean, he's had some surgeries. And I think he said he had six uh, different surgeries before this one. And uh, he said this is absolutely by far the most painful thing he's ever been through uh, as far as surgery goes. He, he said he severely underestimated uh, what recovery was going to look like. And... I think I did too. I mean, I knew it was going to be bad, but I had nothing to compare it to uh, where Tracy does. So, um, so just to, just to kind of go back and recap, I had uh, L4, L5, and S1 fused, and it was an uh, ALIF and a PLIF, which is anterior lumbar intrabody fusion and posterior. Uh, so basically, they went in uh, with an incision through the front and uh, placed took the, the disease discs out and placed spacers uh, between my vertebrae, between L4 and L5 and L5 and S1, and uh, bone grafting material. And then they flipped me over, closed me up, flipped me over, and put uh, a rod and screws uh, in from the backside. So uh, quite major surgery. And the recovery, so I think... I, I don't remember if it was day two or three, I did a video where I was uh, out walking around. Now, walking is great, uh, but there's, there's downsides to that, too. And we'll talk about that here in a second because I'm going through that like right now. Um, but anyway, so just to kind of give you an idea, uh, days for me, days uh, two, which is when I got out of the hospital, uh, stayed overnight. So day one being the day of surgery, day two being the next day. Um, Man, the surgery pain was terrible. The incision pain was terrible. Um, I was on oxycodone for a few days, and then I asked them to switch me to tramadol. Uh, I just do not care for oxycodone, and uh, quite honestly, it, it, it did not really touch the pain all that much. Uh, I had had tramadol before when my back was messed up uh, to kind of get me through till the surgery date, and it seemed to work well. So I switched to tramadol, and it worked okay. But uh, the thing I will tell you is for probably, well, probably the first two and a half weeks, uh, there was no sleep to be had because you have an incision in the front and an incision in the back. 
Um, it doesn't matter how you lay. It does not matter how you sit. You cannot get comfortable. Uh, there, there's just always uh, a nagging, aching pain that will not allow you to sleep. Uh, there was a point on, I think, about day 15. Uh, I think I had gone three days on about an hour and a half of sleep. And uh, I, I literally laid in my wife's lap and cried because I was so mentally frustrated and I was so tired. Uh, psychologically, I was broken. I was just, just broken, just beat up and broken. Uh, and most of that was from sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is a real thing. And if your experience is like mine, prepare yourself for that because it's going to happen. Um, so about day 10 for me, 10 or 11, the surgery and incision pain started to subside, uh, which was really cool. Uh, I'd, so I'd started out walking a couple of miles a day on the very first day I got home and I've progressed. Uh, now I'm, I walk five, six miles a day, uh, because walking feels good. Uh, it keeps you limber, keeps you loose uh, mentally. It's great because if you don't have the nerve pain that you had before, so you got to remember, uh, before I had this surgery, I could barely walk. Um, I mean, there were about seven months of, uh, walking hunched over, uh, with extreme pain down my, down my butt cheeks and down the backs of my legs. And, uh, I mean, the nerves were just a train wreck. Uh, it was all I could do to, to even get out to the kennels to feed my dogs. Um, and, you know, I, I was focused on the next place to sit down because that's the only way I could get relief was sitting. Um, to be able to stand up straight and walk and not have that pain is so, uh, at least mentally, is so refreshing. So walking actually feels good. But anyway, uh, about day 10 or so, 10 or 11, the, the incision pain got, got pretty good. Uh, I mean, it still hurt, but it was not the kind of hurt like it was on day two through eight or nine, right? So uh, everything's starting to subside, the swelling starting to go down a little bit, um, things are really starting to look up. And about day 10 or 11, I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be okay. Uh, this is, this is pretty good. And uh, about day 13, the, the inflammation set in, right? So, um, where they damaged all the bone, where the screws went in and where they did the laminectomy, which is where they cut the back, the ridges off the back of your spine to free up those nerves. Um, all that bone has to heal and bone only heals under inflammation. So the bone is inflamed, it becomes inflamed and I can't really call it pain. It was more of an ache. Just a deep, deep ache in my hips and in my back. Uh, kind of like a toothache that you can eat on, uh, right? You get a toothache and you can kind of eat on it. And, and for a day or two, you're like, ah, this kind of sucks. And after about day three or four, it just grinds on your soul uh, and, and just doesn't go away. There's no, no getting away from it. Uh, it's not really like a sharp pain, but it's just constantly pounding on you. And that's, that's where I was at uh, about day 15 or so. I had that deep ache and I hadn't, wasn't able to sleep. Um, and that's when I, I literally broke down uh, and started crying uh, with my wife. I said, I, I just, I, I don't know how much longer I can do this. So we made it through that. Uh, I actually called the doctor uh, because I thought I'd messed something up uh, because it hurt that kind of bad. I mean, it was just, just grinding on me and, uh, after I explained my, my symptoms to the doctor, the doctor said, no, that's completely normal. That's the inflammation uh, from the bone healing and, and it affects everybody differently. So uh, we don't want the inflammation to completely go away, but uh, we do want to tame it enough to where you're not miserable. So I was prescribed um, uh, steroids, um, gosh darn it, prednisone. Um, in a taper pack, right? So you take six the first day, five the second day, four, three, two, one. And that got me through uh, the hardest uh, of that inflammation because after, by the time I was done with that six day regimen or whatever it was, um, 
things were, were pretty good. And that was, let's see, I started those on about day 15 or 16. So about day 22 or 23, today's day 28. So, um, things are not bad right now. Um, I mean, I've had, so probably for the past four or five nights, I've slept six, between six and eight hours, which, uh, is totally refreshing, uh, totally mentally, uh, <laughs> psychologically refreshing to be able to actually sleep for a while. Um, I'm typically falling asleep eight or nine o'clock and, and I'm waking up three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. Um, and there's no point in trying to go back to sleep at that point. I'm, I'm stoved up and, and kind of hurting enough that, uh, I just get up and make coffee and watch the sun come up, which isn't bad. But, uh, here the past couple of days, and, and I, I think I know what's going on here the past couple of days, uh, my calves and my feet have been hurting quite tremendously. Um, they're just aching. They just ache, uh, and it's, it's, it's muscle. It's a muscle ache. So I think what's going on, and, and I want to tell you guys this because I'm sure, about 90% sure this is my problem. So you can't bend, lift, or twist after you've had this surgery, right? So you tend to start wearing shoes that are convenient to wear, right? So I've been wearing my Crocs. I like Crocs. Um, I've been wearing, uh, oh, they're kind of like, Hey dudes, but they're called reef, uh, shoes anyway. So I, I kind of been wearing those because I don't have to bend over to put them on. I can just slip my feet in them. Well, something else I've been doing is I've been walking a lot in those and they have no support whatsoever. So I think the, the, the experience I'm having with my calves and my feet is from, you know, walking five and six miles a day, uh, with in shoes with no support is starting to catch up with me. And, uh, like right now my calves really, really hurt. Uh, but what I've done is I've taken my tennis shoes, which are nice tennis shoes. They have good support and I just loosened them up, uh, still tied them, but I, I finally got them to where I can get my feet in them. Uh, just, just slipping my feet in them, but they're tight enough that I don't walk out of them when I'm walking. So, um, and I'm, you know, of course I'm able to put socks on with the, with the little sock tube thing that I showed you guys, I think, uh, during one of my videos, but, um, word to the wise, when you start walking, figure out some shoes with some decent support, because if you're like me, I, I really, uh, I walk a punch, man. I, and I enjoy it, but I think I've gotten myself, uh, into kind of a pickle by walking in shoes that were convenient instead of shoes that had support. So try to figure out a way to get some decent shoes on your feet when you start walking a bunch. Um, I have my first follow-up appointment two weeks from today. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully there's an x-ray and we see some, uh, we see the bones fusing and healing and, um, everything getting to where, you know, hopefully in 10 or 12 weeks, uh, I'll be released and be back to, to where I should be. But I kind of wanted to give you guys uh, a little bit of heads up. If anybody's going to have this surgery, what the first 28 days of recovery might look like for you. Uh, if, if, if it looks like what it looked like for me and Tracy, because, uh, my friend Tracy's going through the same stuff I'm going through. Uh, when I called him on the, I think the 13th or 14th and started talking about this deep aching in my hips and my back and, uh, just like a, just a deep, deep ache that was beating on my soul, uh, three or four days later, uh, he called me and said he was starting to, starting to feel that as well. And, and, uh, you know, he had called his doctor and, and he was told the same thing that it was inflammation from the bone, you know, starting to heal where they damaged the bone to, to, uh, do what they needed to do in there. So, uh, I mean, his experience has pretty much been three, four, five days behind mine. Uh, we talked about it again yesterday and everything that I've gone through in the past several days, uh, he's starting to catch up with, uh, the lack of sleep. I mean, he hasn't, he, he went days without sleep as well. So, um, it, it is probably not uncommon for, for all of these things that I'm telling you about to come to pass. So if you're going to have spinal fusion surgery, if your experience is like mine and Tracy's, um, 
the kind of kind of the things you can expect are, are horrible incision pain for seven or eight days. Uh, and when that starts to subside, uh, probably you'll experience a whole lot of deep bone aches from the inflammation and the bones trying to, to heal up where they got damaged. Uh, that'll go on for days. Uh, sleep will be something that's non-existent for you. Uh, and, and mentally, it's going to break you down. Uh, I'm telling you, you will... Uh, I'm pretty strong mentally. I've, I've been through a lot of things and seen a lot of things and, and, but this is like nothing I've ever experienced. Uh, just it, it, it beat me up real bad, uh, both physically and, uh, mentally and psychologically. Uh, things are obviously, like I said, turning up now, uh, day 28 and probably for the last four or five days, things have been not too bad. Uh, but Man, I'm telling you, the first three and a half or so weeks, uh, the suck factor is so high that uh, really, if you're going to have this done or, 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 or uh, thinking about having it done or you're going to have it done, you've got a date to have it done, prepare yourself uh, mentally and, and just understand that it will, it will get better. But it's it's going to be a roller coaster and it's going to be 28 days doesn't sound like a very long time. But uh, mentally, uh, it seemed like an eternity before things really started to look up. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys find this helpful and hopefully uh, in the next oh, four to five weeks, we get back to doing some fun gun videos and, uh, you know, shooting and uh, gear and stuff like that. But uh Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, Sheriff Matt Oller from Audrain County, Missouri. Have a great day.